Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Miyota 1975 GMTs are like buses. You wait for a year and then three of them turn up at once. I looked at the Bull of a Devil Diver GMT that was ashamed of its fourth hand during the week and I've also got the beautiful Vario Empire GMT that I took to Tasmania with me in the queue for review. But today it's the turn of the big boss citizen itself because I'm going to take a look at their 8 series GMT. Now the 8 series appeared very briefly on the channel a couple of years ago at its launch. Mr P bought one because he buys one of everything. But it's nice to get another look at what has become a bit of a sleeper hit for the brand. Not cheap though, the Aussie RRP on these is well north of 2 grand. But who pays RRP? Certainly not subscriber of the channel, Morgan, who kindly loaned me this one for review. Thank you, Morgan. Now he got it in a trade and he's not sure if he's going to keep it or not. Let's have a look at it and see if we can offer him any helpful advice in the comment section in that regard. Let's flip the camera and get on with it. I must say I have enjoyed this month. I have enjoyed March here at Jomwa Mansions. I feel I have had a fair spread of the affordable end of the watch market on the channel so far this March. We've had $35 watches, $45 watches, $125 titanium dive watches, the AliExpress sale with all the nuggets therein, Seiko's best described as unusual, microbrand Kickstarters that didn't get over the line, in fact they cancelled the campaign after my negative review, oops. We've had updated versions of old watches, we've had gold watches, we've had watches where the movement let it down, we've had watches where the movement was the star of the show, and finally we are ending March with a couple of big brand GMTs from within the Citizen Group. The Bulova Oceanographer GMT and today the Citizen 8 Series GMT, arguably the most impressive watch of the month. But then again it should be because it's the most expensive watch that I have looked at all month. Look, the law of diminishing returns certainly applies. You don't get 60 times what you do with this than if you went for the, the Pagani earlier in the month, but you do get more. If you pay more, that is for sure. I've been impressed by this Citizen 8 Series GMT. I've actually been impressed with it in a way that I wasn't necessarily impressed with the three-hander when I looked at it a couple of years ago. I think it really suits this style of watch overall. It's a great GMT movement in here, and I'm impressed with what you get for your money as long as you shop around for it. I'm also impressed with the warranty, five-year warranty on one of these citizens if you buy it from an AD here in Australia. Really, you need to go to Tudor if you want to get that equivalent warranty, and you're gonna be paying a damn sight more for a Tudor than you are for one of these. I will circle back to Tudor a bit later on though. I reckon this would make a cracking one watch collection. This could very well be the highest up the horological food chain that anyone needs to go, but if you wanna go further, I reckon Tudor is your next option. Citizen branded polishing cloth and the usual nonsensical Citizen reference number. This is the NB6031-56E containing a calibre 9054. Technically I erred in the intro when I said it was a 9075. It's based on the 9075 but it's actually a little bit souped up by comparison. I'll give you the spec details shortly. And there we go, and I must say, this is a rather impressive looking timepiece. Quite an imposing timepiece straight out of the box. Look, there is quite a lot going on. Perhaps you could call it a little bit over the top, a little bit brash, but if this style resonates with you, yeah, this is a really impressive package overall. It's chunky, it feels good on wrist, it feels substantial and yeah, you feel like you're getting quite a lot for your money. You're certainly getting quite a lot of watch for your money in terms of the dimensions. I measure this one at 41 mil in diameter, 13 and a half mil thick. Now, lug to lug is always slightly up for debate with these integrated bracelet watches. Let's take it from there to there. That is 47 mil. Lug width is not up for debate. It is not applicable today. It does taper down to about 17 at the clasp though. As sized for me, seven inch wrist, average size wrist, 168 grams. Like I said, 
imposing. 100 meters of water resistance from a push-pull crown, flat sapphire crystal, and the movement, as discussed, is a Citizen Miota 9054. And there it is, looks like your standard 9000 series Miota, because it is one. Look at those Tokyo stripes there on the main plate. However, they have put a Citizen rotor, actually, arguably not as nice as the standard Miyota rotor. Now I did say this was souped up a little bit compared to our 9075. This one has a 50 hour power reserve as opposed to the 42 hour power reserve that they quote with the 9075. Also better accuracy, minus 10 to plus 20 seconds per day, maximum daily variance. Now the 1954 is just like the 9075 in that it is a true GMT movement. It can be manually wound by rolling the crown forward. When you pull the crown out to the first position, you would normally expect to adjust the date here if it was a traveler GMT. This one, you don't adjust the date, you adjust the hour hand in one hour increments. And if you notice the second hand, it hasn't stopped, it doesn't hack the movement. A true GMT you set by pulling the crown to the second position and you set the GMT hand first effectively. So you set the GMT hand and the minute hand and then you go back and you set the date and the hour hand. Meaning if you are genuinely traveling between time zones, you can flick back and forward over the dates without stopping the movement at all. Has its advantages, has its disadvantages, but it is favored by collectors over collar GMTs because of the increased complexity in the movement itself. In terms of case finishing, this one, as you can see, is a used watch. Morgan got it in a trade, as mentioned, so there are a couple of scuffs and scratches. It's a very masculine watch, this one. It's a tool watch, therefore the majority of the surfaces are brushed as it should be. Vertical brush on that side, a little bit of fine horizontal brushing on the two edges of the mid case. We do have some high polished surfaces though to break it all up, including at the fore and aft of the wings on either side. And there's a high polished chamfer. There's a line running all the way from lug tip to lug tip. On the opposite side, there is a rather weedy unsigned crown. I am unimpressed by the unsigned crown, especially considering the price of this one. Now the bracelet, integrated bracelet watch, you want the bracelet to be a good one. And I think this is a good one. Again, the majority of brush surfaces, however, the front edge of the mid links, the back edge of the mid links are both high polish. They can do that to break up the look, to add a little bit of extra light play, but without compromising the scratchability of the bracelet, if you will, because those surfaces are not exposed in the same way that the rest of the bracelet is. Is. There are also, perhaps you can just tell, little chamfers. They've just taken the edge off of the upper and lower surfaces of the outer links. Very much for comfort, I think that is a good idea. Not such a good idea though, pin and collar system holding these links together. It was a bit of a pain switching from a half link to a full link just to get this one to fit me. Now, the clasp, mid triggers, Built-in double triggers combined to the class. The Citizen brand name is just printed on top. No micro adjust at all. So half links, I mentioned those. That's how you're adjusting this one, just like the Pitsman from yesterday. And just like the Pitsman from yesterday, I'll be complaining about that a little bit later on. No complaints about the comfort though. It is nicely done. All fits together well, and that is really soft underneath. Now, I have referred to this one as masculine and bold a couple of times already, and I think there's some serious BDE emanating from that dial. Big dial energy. Lots going on, and it's proud of the fact that there is lots going on. Apparently, this cross hatching, the striping, all those little rectangles and squares are meant to replicate the window frames in a Tokyo skyscraper, according to Citizen anyway. It is quite nice though, not necessarily necessary. You could have done a plain dial with this one, but they wanted to take this one to the next level. And I guess it does complement all the angles on the bracelet. All indices are applied. They have a linear brush running the length, high polish chamfers to the edges, again, replicating the mixture of brushed and polished surfaces on the case of the watch. There's loom around the outer edge and there's a date frame surrounding the date complication at the three o'clock. However, it has been recessed into the dial, which is a really nice touch. Citizen brand name just printed on, Series 8 automatic and GMT also just printed. The whole dial is just molded. Printed minute track around the outer edge as well, and it's a good handset. Silver hands against this black dial, not always ultra noticeable depending on light conditions, but yeah, bevel down the middle, plenty of loom on them, needle second hand, and a GMT hand that isn't ashamed to be there. They have 
rather darkened the center section, the stem of the hand. It's a dark blue because obviously this is the Batman color version, but we do have a prominent orange tip, meaning you can actually see which of the hour markers it is pointing to. The bezel itself, 60 click bi-directional bezel. You don't get much of an audible satisfaction from this one. It's completely silent in fact, but it is nice and notchy in operation and everything lines up as it should. All right, if you are a regular viewer of the channel, you know that I generally prefer smaller, slimmer, lighter and slighter watches than this. But for some reason, this one really appeals. It's just got a presence about it, some serious wrist presence. It is quite thick and chunky, but the integrated bracelet helps balance it out in a way that the Pitsman from yesterday perhaps did not. Definitely could do with some extra micro adjust here, but it's a crack in wrist roll thanks to all of those links. And yeah, that dial is a bit in your face, but in a really good way, I think. Fits my wrist nicely, so if you have an average size wrist, it's gonna fit your wrist nicely as well. I think you could probably get away with this one on a six and a half inch wrist. These integrated bracelet watches though are a little bit size sensitive, so if you can, try one on in a shop if you are in any doubt. Legibility though, yeah, those hands kinda come and go on the dial. Obviously under my studio lights, it does vary depending on the angle, but could do better in terms of legibility. Which brings us neatly on to the moans and niggles section. Legibility being the first one, yeah, not fantastic. I think because there's such complexity to the dial, because there is such deliberate light play coming from the dial, it does mean the hands and even the indices aren't as distinct as they should be by day and by night as well. Citizen use their own proprietary Natu light loom and I've never been all that convinced. I've never been all that impressed by it. Looks okay initially. It's got that kind of C3, dare I say, loomy bright color, that kind of mid green to it. But when I turn the speed up, the indices disappear and even the hands are pretty much gone by the end of my test, denting its capabilities as a genuine all rounder. The crown is a little bit weedy and unsigned, not what I would expect at the price. Don't worry, we're talking about price shortly. And I reckon it needs a bit of micro adjustment. Half lengths are all well and good, but with a watch pushing 170 grams, I like to get just the right fit. It would have been so easy for them as well just to extend this bottom section of the clasp and put two or three small micro adjust holes there, but they haven't, so you're sizing it by the half length today instead. And then there's the price. I already flashed it up in the intro. 2250 AUD, I'll talk in Aussie dollars today for fairness. That citizen is just a little bit too high, I think. I always say it, never pay RRP for citizen products. You can generally get them much cheaper than that. Indeed, if you go to a local authorized dealer of citizen watches, you should be able to take $450 off that star by current price 1799. However, I found one on eBay for 1475. Now, that doesn't necessarily come with a five year warranty, so do factor that into your thinking today. But I reckon if you hang on, if you bide your time, you should be able to pick one of these up from an AD at around that 1500 Australian dollar mark. I think it's a pretty solid offering for $1,500. They don't seem to be discounting this one quite as much as the Boulevard Devil Diver GMT, admittedly, with a slightly inferior movement. Perhaps Citizen is protecting the mothership. Perhaps they're not allowing retailers big discounts on the main brand itself. So if you're okay with the chunky sizing and in-your-face styling, this could make a great one watch collection for someone, particularly if you find one at the right price. Where to from here though, if you are looking up the ladder? Well, I reckon the Tudor Black Bay GMT is the next obvious move from here and it costs four times the price of one of these citizens, assuming you pay around 1500 Aussie dollars for it. Like I said earlier, you pay more, you get more, but the law of diminishing returns certainly applies. So should Morgan keep it or should he flip it? What do you think? Leave him a comment, let him know. I reckon if he's got a taste for this design and he's got a wrist for it, he should keep it. I'm half tempted to make him an offer for it myself. So there you have it, a really interesting proposition, this citizen. There's more than enough watch here itself to be the end point of your collection. But there's more than enough in this watch that you could use it as a stepping stone to take your collection in one direction or another. It all comes down to what price you pay for it. And I say it again, do not pay RRP. If you want something with a similar look but for less money, why not check out either of these two? Thanks for watching. I will see you again in the next one.